In this video, I try and make my own paint the way the old masters used to make. That's right, just egg and pigments, and apparently you can make Renaissance quality artworks. This video is sponsored by Blackmagic Design and DaVinci Resolve. Check it out, link in the description, more about that later in the video. Buongiorno, I am a Signore Giazzacci. <laughs> I can't keep that accent up, that's good. Like Everyone's gonna kill me. G'day. I'm Signor Giazzacci, here in beautiful 1320 Renaissance Italy, where I have invented a new method of painting. You see, it happened the other day when I was making my egg omelette for breakfast. Now, I'm pretty short of space in my humble little art studio, so in my whirlwind of cooking my omelettes, I knocked pigment into my cooking eggs. And then I got curious and did a bit of mixing and gave it a bit of a paint. And it turns out that egg yolk is a great suspension medium for colored pigments. All right, I've, I've organized my art studio, simplified everything down to the basics, the ingredients that I had around me when I accidentally stumbled upon what I'm gonna call egg tempera painting. Now I just want the yolk, I don't want water, I don't want the runny whites of the egg. So I need to start off by separating the yolk from everything just to get the yolk and then I also need to dry it off. Basically so that there's no water or whites that are gonna creep into the yolk when I break the membrane and spill out that golden yolk. Now it turns out this is a tricky process to get right, so you know, if you f it up, just start again. with my pure egg yolk ready to go it was just a matter of replicating the experience i stumbled upon by mixing my powdered pigments the pigments mix surprisingly well unsurprisingly the orange looked very vibrant the red punched through really really well it was with the blue where i started to have some skepticism as to how strong the pigment will show through if mixed with a color that would affect that color. And while there was a tint of green, of course, because of that color mix, the pigment did seem to reliably overpower the yolk, which I hoped would continue to be the case as I got to white. I think this was the one I had most doubt in, but it turns out by mixing even more white pigment and slightly watering down the mix, I ended up with an, I guess you could say very warm white paint. Colors, as you can see, went down pretty well. A little transparent, especially if I want to get an even consistency. And this is where I started to consult with a, a local friend of mine. He's well known in the town I'm from. His name is Signor Gugel. Gugeli, known to some, uh, he, he's very knowledgeable. Signor Gugeli suggested that uh, this is the type of paint we might want to work up in thin layers rather than working in clumps. The nature of the egg yolk, of course, is that it will dry thick and clumpy and you'll end up with vulnerable layers to lifting and you'll end up with ugly textures. Instead, by cross-hatching thin, gently watered down layers, and maybe even by adding a drop or two of vinegar, we might be able to preserve the workability of the paint, at least for a day or two in a sealed container. Which was the only thing I found a little bit tricky about this medium so far, because overall it applies really well and the pigment shows through really well, but it dries quickly. In the 10 minutes that I put down my swatches and mixed some colors, I could feel the yolk in the original colors starting to dry out a little bit. So I think when I mix my first batches of colors. I'll try that little Gugeli suggested uh, vinegar tip to see if I can get through a whole painting without my yolks drying out. But something tells me this is the sort of medium where people are going to have to consistently mix new pigments as they go. All in all, the experience was actually surprisingly pleasant and reasonably straightforward. Egg yolk, pigment, mix, slightly water down, put it down, paint. I'm a genius. I think this is going to uh, catch on like wildfire. I reckon, I reckon people are going to use this for centuries to come. Nothing's going to come along to become superior to, to my egg tempera painting method. Unless someone comes along with something that doesn't dry as quickly and has a better colour fastness and longevity. Nah, it's not going to happen. So I've got my swatches down. Let's do a little bit of a piece. So I'm going to mix a bunch of new colors. Now I have just worked with some primary strong colors, but in theory, I can grind down some pastels to create new powder pigments from a wider variety of colors. So let's see if I can mix my tempera paints with pastel shaving and uh, try and create a, a nice organic landscape. So first things first, I mixed up a batch of pigments. Primaries like before, but this time starting to delve into some of the more nuanced colors. I started to pick up confidence with this to the point where I was starting to mix different pigments into my different experiments. Basically doing color mixing at the pigment stage rather than later when I'm painting.
And with a pretty wide and naturalistic range of colours ready to go, it was time to jump into a landscape. I thought I would depict my beautiful Italian backyard. Having lived in Italy all my life and enjoyed the beautiful hills and Italian uh, landscape features, I thought it was only fitting that I, Cesari, the, uh, the renowned Italian artist, would paint the, the Italian landscape. I know you guys aren't getting sick of this at all, so I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> I have to say, this stuff was weirdly delightful to work with. It was sort of gouache -y. I wanted to work with it like it's like oil paints because it felt very, I don't know, tangible and, and there's something really tactile about this, but it dried very quickly and had to constantly sort of be gently watered down. Not too much, and it didn't seem to want to work all that great as watercolour, but at the same time, I couldn't help but want to put probably thicker layers on than I should. That being said, that produced results that ended up with really nice textures that actually, in my view, added to that authentic classical painting feel. With the colours coming together into the foreground, it was time to go into a little bit of detail adding some cypress trees along the hillside, working in some shadows to accentuate some lighting, and I finished off by peppering some different coloured flowers in the meadow. And here it is, my Italian landscape. For a dabble, I'm really happy with this, and for a dive, I think it's time to step it up a notch. But first, a word from our sponsor. Blackmagic have sponsored this video and we have run all of the channels at Jazz Studios over the last three or four years. And honestly, since using Blackmagic Design's DaVinci Resolve, which is free by the way, link in the description, everything else has felt like going back to the Stone Age. Just like oil painting comes along to revolutionize art, Blackmagic Design and DaVinci Resolve has come along to revolutionize video post-production. So whether you're editing your first stream or vlog, or if you're a Hollywood blockbuster studio, or you're somewhere in the middle like me, running a multi person, multi-channel studio with a meager budget. Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve allows you to have all the ambition you could possibly want at the scale that you currently are. Cutting edge sound design, industry standard post-production and special effects, incredibly streamlined user interfaces that are universal amongst all versions of Resolve means that once you learn it, you know it, and no matter what computer or version you're using, you can always pick up and carry on. DaVinci Resolve has revolutionized the way we make content here at Jazz Studios and you're gonna love it. Check it out, links in the description and a huge thank you to Blackmagic Design and DaVinci Resolve for sponsoring this video. Now it's time for the dive and for my dive, I wanted to create something that would really be my legacy. At the end of the day, the properties of egg tempera painting are far more long lasting than you might expect. The yolk holds the light fastness that retains the colour in the paintings. There are egg tempera paintings dating back thousands and thousands of years, is what I would say if I hadn't been pretending that I had invented it in this video. So I won't say that. But I will say that in order to lock in my legacy as the inventor of egg tempera painting, I thought I should do a Renaissance style self-portrait immortalising my legacy. As I started to mix in the colours and work both mixing on separate palette areas and on the canvas itself, I got so lost in this process. Now I have to admit, I am not one for realism very much. I tend to lean on the comic book and cartoony styles. But every now and then, a medium captures me and I find myself getting pulled into really wanting to capture an authentic, tangible, realistic piece realistic scene or portrait. And in this case, I really was having quite a bit of fun trying to replicate that Renaissance style. And I think it was pulling me in so much simply because of how real and tactile the egg tempera feels. Seeing the texture go down and even as it dries, seeing how it's gonna end up looking and those warm tones that naturally come through because of the color of the yolk, it was actually surprisingly delightful and fun. Blocking the piece in, it was time to start adding some details and refinements. I kept to a pretty naturalistic style. I wasn't going to go over the top detail because at the end of the day, this isn't my strong suit, but I was really enjoying how my Renaissance portrait sort of sketch was coming together.
Last but not least, it was time to add in a few accents. Mixing from my near white with some yellows and greens, I started to go around the piece and give some edge highlighting just to add a little bit of pop and that final step of contrast. What? What? Egg? Bloody egg. Egg and pigment. Who'd have thought it? Who'd have thunk? Egg. Egg. Oh, look, the, the, the jig's up. I did not invent egg tempera painting. I, I know, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I was joking. You might say, I was yoking. You, you wouldn't say that probably i'm sorry how did how did i go by the way i'm not i'm not like a, a champion of like realism but you know i mean come on i think i did all right you know it's all right the skin's a little washed out portions are more flattering than they maybe should be you know what I mean? it's pretty cool I have had so much fun doing this. I really have felt like a classical painter and I hope you've enjoyed coming on this historically inaccurate journey with me. And I am really happy with the results and it feels like I am now akin with the old masters. And if you agree, make sure to smash that like button. And if you disagree, still smash that like button. That'll show me. Oh, I won't see that coming. <laughs> Please leave a comment. Let me know what mediums and historical things maybe you want me to try. I'm really eyeing off a big slab of marble one day, but that might take a bit of a budget. But you know what would help out? If you subscribe and follow along in future content and who knows what uh, amazing journeys we might go on. But this has been a pretty amazing journey so far. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video, but until next time, EGG!